What's up everybody, this is Danny, and these are the new Samsung Galaxy S23 smartphones. The S23 and S23 Plus have flat FHD Plus displays at 6.1 and 6.6 inches, and get the new overclocked Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor, and Samsung says these are all new cameras across the board, and will start at $799 for the S23 and $999 for the S23 Plus. But the one I'm going to focus on today is the biggest and baddest, the Galaxy S23 Ultra with the new 200 megapixel camera. I'm going to go over what's new and I'm going to give you a camera tour to show you what you can expect when you pick one up. Samsung has some killer deals and promotions right now and trade-ins are always worth looking into so if you're interested I will leave a link below so it'll make things easy. The first thing I noticed right away is the Galaxy S23 Ultra feels totally different in the hand. It has flat sides this year instead of curved and it's a noticeable difference. The curve of the display is also not as drastic so all that adds up to a more mature grip. I'm not sure how much of a difference this is going to make since most people will be using a case anyways but I thought I would point it out. It looks like the S23 Ultra is slightly thicker if you look hard enough you can see it on the bezels but to be honest the size is almost identical. Here it is next to the Samsung Galaxy S23. 2 Ultra, it's hard to tell the difference until you look at the thickness around the camera rings. It has the same 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED 2X display with the 120Hz refresh rate and looks amazing as usual, crisp, bright, and colorful. I wouldn't expect anything less from Samsung. Same 5000mAh battery, up to 12 gigs of RAM and up to 1TB in storage is available. It does come in 4 standard colors, lavender, green, cream, and black. And I think the green is the one to get this year. The color looks really great in person. This one also gets the overclock Qualcomm processor they're calling the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile platform for Galaxy. So that extra speed and improved heatsink will make this one of the fastest phones available on the market. The charging stays at the same 45 watt wired, which I know that some people might be disappointed with, which gives you 50% charge in 30 minutes. And wireless charging speeds also stay the same. And you also get the built-in S Pen that we saw in the Galaxy S22 Ultra, which is awesome. But Samsung didn't mention any improvements in the pen, so I'm assuming that is the same as well. But the big difference here is the camera. All of the other specs look similar. If you look at the setup, it looks very similar to the S22 Ultra, but the rings around the camera are slightly thicker. But Samsung stated again that all of these cameras are new, so stay tuned to the camera comparisons to see if that is true. But the big deal here is the 200 megapixel main camera sensor with f1.7 aperture. And they also said that there are big improvements to the optical image stabilization, which I'm looking forward to. But let's jump into the camera app and see what's new here. The first thing that you see when you open up the camera is portrait mode. This looks like the same setup with the 1x and 3x portrait shots. The photo mode is very familiar if you've used an ultra phone in the last couple of years. It has the same choice between the ultra wide, the main, the 3x, and 10x optical which can still zoom up to 100x. For high resolution options you get two this year. You get a 50 megapixel option if you want a super detailed shot but you want smaller file sizes. And now you get a 200 megapixel option, which is awesome. Here is an example. So I will take a picture of this new Samsung laptop right here, which is awesome, by the way. And you will notice that it takes some time to process. This is a lot of information to package together. And if you zoom in, there is a ton of detail here. So I can't wait to start testing this out today. So stay tuned. If you're wondering, here's the file size of the 200 megapixel images. This one is over 15 megabytes. So the files are quite large. So I thought I would show you. I did notice though on the 200 megapixel mode it gives you an option for zoom which is interesting even though this is a digital crop I'm assuming you have the flexibility if you decide to leave it in this mode it goes up to 6x so I played with this and tried it out. Even though I couldn't take these images off of this phone you can see what it looks like. Naturally the more digital zoom you use the images do take a hit so I'm not sure if this mode is useful but I'm thinking the 2x zoom might be worth using if you want to use this exclusively on the 200 megapixel mode all the time. Next let's jump into video. You have all your choices here but the max optical zoom remains at 10x which I absolutely love having and the maximum video zoom remains at 20x just in case you were wondering. Video frame rates and options look unchanged up to 4K 60 frames per second and 8K 30 frames per second but new this year and finally with super steady mode we get up to QHD resolution no more 1080p cap so I'll definitely be testing this. And you can pick between the ultra wide and the main lens still when recording super steady video. Portrait mode video is still here of course and there is a full HD box above it there which makes me think there's a 4K portrait mode now on these phones which is much needed. 
Another thing that I found new in the menu is a shortcut for expert raw in the more section, which I think is nice. You always have been able to access the pro mode from here to just all of your values. So you can set up that perfect shot just the way that you like it with access to all of the lenses. I love that with Samsung phones, you get this built right in and it's one of the better ones for sure. But now you can launch expert raw right here after downloading it. I almost wish they would just merge pro mode and expert raw and just make it into one mode now, but here is where you will find your astrophotography mode where you can set your duration for exposure time i definitely need to test this out against something like the pixel 7 pro and you can shoot up to 50 megapixels as well for high resolution results no 200 megapixel option here at this time the one thing that confuses me is that you can drag any of these modes into your camera shortcuts on the app, but the expert raw, you cannot drag this in there. I'm not sure what the point of having this here on the more tab if you can't do that, but I hope they change this in a software update very soon. I did look through the settings as well on expert raw, but I didn't see anything new here that is worth noting. I played with these phones for a few hours messing around on the camera and the macro mode and other functions are still here. So I'll have to test them out to see if they have improved or not. The front facing camera software also looks similar with the built in filters and the color tone changes, which I appreciate because this can make a big difference in natural mode. The good news is I also looked on the S23 and S23 Plus and the software looks pretty much identical. So besides the 200 megapixel camera, it looks like you'll pretty much get the same experience. So that is good to see. So let me know, what do you think? Is the S22 Ultra worth the upgrade this year? Are you excited about this 200 megapixel camera? Let me know in the comment section below and make sure you subscribe for all the epic camera comparisons that are about to drop. Hit that like button if you love Samsung and I will see you in the next one.